While some people believed in the power of scientists, others thought that they had to be connected to nature. Therefore, after enlightenment, where everyone thought of themselves as knowledgeable, some wanted something of their own, their heart. Thus, the Romanticism era began. During the Romanticism, there was a connection within one's emotions. When people read the word Romanticism, they may conclude that the era was about romantic gestures, such as kissing and hugging. However, this was not the case. The Romanticism era was often dark and disturbing as it had more to do with emotions, nature, and the power of human imagination. Most of the art works of this period are associated with one or more of the motifs of Romanticism. Nature, childhood innocence, power of imagination, symbolism, myth, Gothicism, and the Romantic hero. The Romantic era originated after the French and American Revolution and the Enlightenment. The movement was filled with different artworks such as music, paintings, poetry, and illuminated poems. Some of the most influential artists were Francesco Heiss, Ivan Ivansovsky, Theodore Jericot, and William Blake. In this virtual museum, we will be able to explore the Romantic era through artworks such as paintings, clothing, architecture, and literature. In room one, we have romantic paintings such as The Raptors of Medusa by Theodore Jericho, Liberty Leading the People by Eugene Delacroix, and The Lady of Charlotte by John William Waterhouse. Theodore Jericho captured the bravery and the survivorship of the men aboard the Medusa, a French warship, with his painting, The Raptors of the Medusa. The motif of this painting could be seen as the artistic motif of the romantic hero. Out of the 400 men who were originally part of the crew, only around 150 men could make it into the makeshift craft that the survivors made. However, only 15 of the 150 men were found alive when the raft was found. Jericho used dark colors in the raft to emphasize the dark time the survivors passed in the raft. Furthermore, he used light and warm colors to illuminate the shoreline and underline that the survivors had been victorious to find the shore. The, print, the painting, Liberty Leading the People by Eugene Delacroix, was created to commemorate the overthrow of King Charles X. This is one of the most iconic art pieces in French history because it highlights a victorious nation. The romantic motif in this painting is also the romantic hero. By viewing the corpses in the images, the audience can comprehend that many people had to die for peace in France. This painting may be dark in many ways with so many dead people. However, the painter added light surrounding the woman and the French flag. This leads the view to comprehend that women at the time were also fighting for the country. Although many men died in the revolution, the painting shows the woman as a romantic hero in this scenario. The Lady of Charlotte the Lady of Charlotte is a painting by John William Waterhouse, depicting a woman in a boat. The woman is a peaceful and seems to be finding herself in nature. John William Waterhouse emphasizes the woman by using a contrasting tone in her dress. This allows the subject to stand out. The woman in the boat is naturally beautiful as the nature around her. In Route 2, we can observe even more paintings of the era, such as The Kiss by Francesco Heiss, Wanderer Above the Sea of Fog by Caspar David Friedrich, and The Soul of the Rose by John William Waterhouse. The Kiss by Francesco Heiss is one of the few romantic paintings that include a romantic gesture such as kissing. Heiss created this artwork in 1859 in Italy. While this is only a painting of a regular man and woman, this art piece is famous because of Highest attention to detail to the couple. However, according to the clothing, the couple is supposed to be to represent a couple from the Middle Ages. Highest uses the clothing as a way to convey the opposites attract. The man is in a warm red tone, while the woman is in a cool blue dress. Yet they are both connected in a kiss. The painting Wander Above the Sea of Fog by Caspar David Friedrich was created to captivate their men romanticism surrounding exploration during the 19th century. The motifs of this painting are the power of imagination and nature. The nature aspect of the artwork in is the mountains. Furthermore, the power of imagination is found within the viewers. The viewers have to imagine themselves in the scenario. During the time, many Europeans and Americans romanticized the idea of exploring. While the young man in the art piece 
has already come this far, he still wonders what more there is to see past all the mountains and fog. The Soul of the Rose is another painting by John William Waterhouse that is also known as My Sweet Rose. This painting is one of Waterhouse's most famous paintings, as it depicts a woman in a garden of roses. The woman in the painting is giving a delicate kiss to one of the roses. Through the painting, the viewer can observe how the rose and the flowers are as delicate as women. If women are cherished and taken care of delicately, they will flourish beautifully. Otherwise, if one treats the flower harshly, the flower will die as would a woman's love. In room 3, we have even more paintings from the Romantic era, such as The Third of May, 1808 by Francisco Goya, The Course of Empire, Desolation by Thomas Cole, and The Ninth Wave by Ivan Ibosovsky. The 3rd of May, 1808 by Francisco Goya portrays the Spaniards uprising against the French forces from the previous day, the 2nd of May, 1808, which was when the Spaniards attacked the Mamelukes and where the beginning of the war for independence began. Furthermore, this painting by Goya is a great example of Christian iconography. This can be observed through the poor laborer in the white shirt with his hands above his head forming a cross with his body. This Spanish man was sacrificing his life for his nation which was being killed off by the French soldiers who were all pointing in his direction. Additionally, the poor man sacrificing himself is the only one wearing light colors to portray himself as pure and selfless. The Course of Empire Desolation The Course of Empire is a series of five paintings created in a period of three years by Thomas Cole. The purpose of the paintings is to portray nature's strength over humans. At the beginning of this series, there is a beautiful forest, which then becomes deforested to build an empire. However, in the last paintings, we can observe that nature has taken over the empire. The Ninth Wave Ivan Ivansovsky's painting, The Ninth Wave, is an extremely famous seascape painting. Ivansovsky's ocean paintings were some of the most iconic and symbolic of the Romanticism period. The Romantic motifs in this painting are symbolism and nature. Furthermore, the painting is based on a tale that waves came in a series of nine, each getting progressively more destructive. Therefore, this would indicate that this painting was captured at the most dangerous wave. Ivasovsky uses a dark color on the sea to portray the dangers of the ocean while using warm colors for the sun. This is Ivasovsky's way of emphasizing that there is always sunshine after the storm. In room 4, we can observe clothing from the Romantic era. Clothing was also different in the Romantic era from nowadays. Men's clothing. During the Romantic era, men typically wore high collars and coats that were fitted around the waist. Many men during this time wore top hats, which could be worn both during the day or in the evening. Furthermore, as far as shoes were concerned, boots and square toed shoes were both worn in this era. Women's clothing. The clothing style for women during this area consisted of dresses and long skirts. These dresses are best described as carriage dresses, which means that the waistline began a couple of inches above the natural waist and flowed into a beautiful skirt. Furthermore, most of these dresses had decorations on the bottom of the skirt. In addition, hair was usually worked in a bun, parted in the middle with curls framing the face, and most women wore bonnets during the day. Children's Clothing here we can observe that children also wore similar clothing to that of their parents. In this picture, we can see a more detailed dress a woman could wear during the Romantic period. In room 5, we can observe some of the famous literature from the Romantic era. Literature was also an important aspect of the Romantic era. Some of the most popular poets from the era include William Blake, Percy Bysshe Shelley, and Jane Austen, which was not a poet but one of the only female novelists of her era. Percy Bysshe Shelley. One of Percy Bysshe Shelley's most famous poems was Osmandias. The poem is about the speaker who meets a traveler, which describes his encounter with two large stone legs of a statue. This statue lacked a torso to connect both legs, yet they stood firm in the middle of the desert. Moreover, near the legs, buried in the sand, the traveler describes the statue's head as having a frown and wrinkled lip. The traveler also describes the pedestal, which states, My name is Osmandias the king who rules over even other kings. Behold what I have built, 
all you who think of yourselves as powerful and despair at the magnificence and superiority of my accomplishments. Overall, the poem by Shelley helps the reader understand that even while people and empires may die and fall apart, there's always art to rely on. William Blake William Blake was a well-known poet in the Romantic era and is most famous for his illuminated prints. Some of his most famous illumination come from his Songs of Innocence and Songs of Experience. The Lamb is one of his works from the Songs of Innocence. The Lamb is influenced by Christianity, as it showcases a young boy talking to a lamb and asking who can make such a beautiful creation. Further along the poem, the young boy answers his own questions by saying that God is the creator of all beautiful things on this earth. Jane Austen Jane Austen is one of the few female authors from the Romantic era. Austen focused her no novels on the dependence of women in a marriage and how they strive to be the perfect housewives and reach a favorable social standing. However, she herself did not enjoy the idea of marrying for money. Therefore, she wrote books about marrying for love and emotion rather than reason. Overall, during the Romantic period, many artists began seeking emotion from their artwork. The art piece did not have to be perfect as long as the painting conveyed emotion to the painter or viewer. Therefore, it is essential to know what motivated artists to draw a specific painting and what the circumstances were during the time they created their piece. This allows the viewer to comprehend the picture itself better and why the artist chose the art style.